Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines, and this is I Am Loved Church. Good morning. It is midweek Wednesdays. I might start naming the videos that maybe midweek Wednesdays sermons. Um, for those of you who are like me who need every bit of strength and truth and love from God, what a perfect time for a plane to fly over a sermon. This has ha actually never happened. I don't know if, how are you feeling, but I know this much. I am getting really annoyed that we can't really go places without worrying about this thing. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm still going to try my best to put my faith in the Lord. <sighs> okay. This is actually filmed Tuesday, and I'm going to air it Wednesday, but it's midweek Wednesday sermons. Now I want to encourage you guys that God is always working, even though we don't feel or see it. And sometimes even when we don't believe it. Again, I need as much strength and fuel and love and peace as I need any and everything I can get from, from heaven. Now, one of the ways that we get those things is by prayer. Prayer opens up the doors for blessings. Prayers go up, blessings come down. I know you guys know that one. Or for those of you who don't, prayers go up, blessings come down. <clears throat> but we have to know who we're praying to. Prayer is very important. See, in my personal walk with God, I'm always in his word. So I'm getting enough of that. I'm, being in his word is, is, you know, as I described it in the past, is heaven opens, but it, it opens the door of communion. And the door of communion is usually correction, seeds of correction, seeds of, of you know, new fruitfulness and whatever you need. Uh, prayer is, is, is the way we talk to God. And when we read the Bible, um, it's a way for God to talk to us. But God doesn't need these things to talk to us. He can do it using the birds or people. He can do it any way. One of the things that someone tried to impart to me was, I think God's trying to tell you something. And when it comes to that, we have to be very cautious because usually in my own personal witness, God usually talks to me through people when the person doesn't even know what they said. So be cautious of people who say, God's trying to tell you something because anyone can say that. <laughs> Most people can't speak for God. <laughs> Let's say that much. Um, and when we're reading the Bible, I'm going to encourage you to pray over the Word of God. Pray over uh, devotionals. Pray over, you know, the theology books or whatever you're reading. Pray over everything. The Bible tells us to pray over everything and for everything. Um, not as a way of getting things, but as a way of staying true to the gospel and to the Lord. Um, there are many enemies in the world. And one of the biggest enemies that we don't pay attention to is not just Satan. Yes, obvious right and wrong scenarios happening. 
obvious things that are hopefully common sense to most people. Not just people being negative. I heard this thing yesterday. I think it was yesterday, day before yesterday. I think it was day before yesterday. Someone, because of what's going on, someone decided to get hostile to the point where they were throwing items at people who were working there. And I was just like, I don't know if that's true or not, but I'm sure that's happened anyways. I was like working as a cashier before and I was like, dude, that's the line for me, man. <laughs> All right, I'm going to just go, go off and continue what I'm saying. I don't get distracted. <sighs> okay, so one of the biggest enemies that I'm finding out it's not usually Satan. Yes, he's the enemy. He started it all. But not to really focus in on that, but to, not to focus on the negative people either, but to really focus on the sinful man or person or body, the sinful nature that each and every one of us has um, within us. If you believe in the Bible, you have one. And if you don't believe in the Bible, you have one. <laughs> because whether I ignore the sun and say it doesn't exist doesn't mean that it's not there, even though I'm purposely being ignorant about it. And people are purposely being ignorant about their own sinful nature. And with that being said... We have to go to the Lord. We should go to the Lord continually to discern, is this me? Or is this something in the world, something being people, Satan, demons, so on and so forth, or whatever. Is this me? We, we always have to check ourselves first, but we can't analyze ourselves. I'm going to be straight up and honest. You can't look at yourself and go, I'm good, because you're always going to take your own side. <clears throat> we have to go to the Lord. And with that being said, we have to be held accountable by other people that the Lord has put into our life or is trying to put into our life, people who strongly believe in God. For those of you who are married, your greatest Usually, if your partner is a believer, your greatest um, critic is your spouse. And you should be able to lean on your spouse's opinion. Go to, hey, babe, what? I'm doing some personal reflection and I want to I get your opinion about who I am. Now, this is very dangerous, of course, but it still is just as dangerous as asking God for correction because God will always put people in your life to help you with what you struggle with and you may not see and you don't, maybe you don't want to see, maybe you don't want to pay attention to it. And God's been trying to get your attention. Um, so I'm going to, I'm not going to get into the marriage thing right now. What I'm going to get into is personal sin. Now, the last few sermons or the things I've been dealing with recently um, has been pornography. My biggest sin that I am aware of is pornography. And it happens in various ways where I'm going to give you a little testimony. I'm not going to go too graphic on you. It was basically... I was up in the middle of the night after my family and kids went to sleep, my wife and kid, kids. And I was like, I'm going to get some time with God because, you know, usually you want to spend as much time with your family as you can. And I, I prayed. I was like, okay, I know the enemy comes out at night. And for those of you who don't know, the enemy comes out in his most powerful He's always out, actually, but he is most powerful when the sun goes down. For reasons, light, darkness, <laughs> I don't want to get into that. Anyways, he's really powerful at night because we have sinful natures. 
actually what they say, freaks come out at night. Well, in other words, demons and spirits, they come, they really make themselves known at night. And a lot of bad things usually happen at night. So I was like, okay, I'll pray. I'm, I know I'm, I'm going into a fight, but I want to spend time with the Lord. And by the way, that's not a good idea, I've realized. If you want to spend time with the Lord, and that may be the only time you can, be very cautious. But if you can avoid it, avoid spending time with the Lord at night. Do it in the morning. So I've been really trying to adjust my schedule to go to sleep really early so I can wake up really early and spend time with God. And it's always best. My fight started around 1130. And I prayed and I was doing great. I was like, man, this is boom, boom, boom. I'm like, Holy Spirit's anointed me within my being, outside my being. I feel surrounded by love. And then I get this random text message on my phone through Facebook. And I shouldn't have opened it, but I did. And I've never gotten this text message before like this. Usually there's these fake profiles. You all know what I'm talking about that people send you. Okay. Or spam messages. And as far as the fake profiles or whatever, there's usually like some explicit, you know, as your man, woman or something. And you click into it and it's kind of like insinuating like this lustful thing as far as like sexual, but they don't really show anything, you know, and then you have to click into it. And usually it's like opens up to a porn site. Well, anyways, long story short, <clears throat> it wasn't one of those it, uh, trying to persuade you to go into it. Well, it was, but it wasn't like hinting like, oh, you know, image. It was straight up porn. Like this message I opened up to was straight up porn. And I was just like, and my eyes went right to it. And I was like, Psh, and I, and I wiped it away. I closed it and I tried to continue my study and I couldn't, I could not do it. I was like, my mind was just gravitated and started thinking and contemplating on what I just saw and was like, there's more if you want to look at it. And I was like, why I was doing so good and then I'm just like this moment happened and it just it just as soon as I saw it I was like gone my mind my nature kicked in and I was just I needed to see more like I said I'm not going to get too graphic on you long story short I start going I went right back to it and I started looking for more and at this moment the Lord was just like you need to pray I'm like, pray right when I'm looking at what I shouldn't be looking at. So my flesh is just going at it. Boom, 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 boom. Looking at it. And anything I could look at. And at these moments, I'm just like, God, help me, help me, help me. My mouth is just pray, just pleading for God's mercy, pleading that he would help me in this situation. And I'm just like, help me, help me, help me, help me. Uh, 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 protect my eyes, protect my ears, my understanding. And I know what you're thinking. You're in control. Actually, the flesh is in control. The sinful man or person is in control. And when that veil or scales go into your eyes and your ears and your understanding, you're, you only hear the enemy's voice. The enemy is part of the fall. The disease within us of sin that desires to sin is within us. We can't save ourselves. And in this moment, I feel this battle raging with inside of me. The spirit rages to seek God and to please him and the flesh seeks darkness and sin to please its father, Satan. And there's this battle. You can feel this friction. I can feel it inside and outside my being. There's this battle raging all through and around me. Part of me is praying for the Lord. And part of, and part of me is craving for the porn and for the sinfulness. 
and something happened, man. Like every site I tried to open up, the physical, the, the evil Jeremy tried to open up. It was like the, the, the website will pop up, all the words will pop up, no images will pop up. This was God. It was like nothing would pop up. And I just kept praying and praying. Like, I can't, I can't, like my eyes are just, I can't do this. And every time I thought I could do it in my own strength, I would just be, before you know it, masturbating. I just wanted to give you that example to show you something. You cannot save yourself. You cannot save yourself. This is not the first time this has happened. This is the first time I've started to fight back, but not with my own strength, but pleading for the strength in the, in the uh, power of God to intervene in that moment, inviting him into that moment with me to fight the battle. And if you think, or you're trying to take the devil on yourself, you're a fool and you will be crushed. You need the power of God. You cannot save yourself. And that is the difference between what we believe as far as those of you who do believe in Jesus. And a lot of people believe in Jesus, but not a lot of people have a personal savior, not just when they got baptized, but daily. They think, oh, just get bab baptism is just kind of like getting a degree. It's just something that you do, you know, or just having a job or just having kids. It's just something that you, you get on this day and, or like a birthday, you, you celebrate it every once in a while, you know, to acknowledge your faith. But I promise you that is not Christian living. That is not what it means to be a Christ follower, to be saved. What it means to be saved is it means that we are constantly at war with the devil. The devil, our sinful nature, who lives in our sinful nature, our bodies. The devil of who lives in other people's sinful natures, people around us. And Satan himself who is in the world. And the moment that we start to relax and think that we're not at war, is the moment that the enemy has won. Lukewarm Christians, they're only fighting a battle, not with Christ, but by themselves, or only on Sundays, or only reading their Bible every once in a while, praying when they need it. And I acknowledge you, man, it's, it's not the truth, man or the full truth. You need Christ every day. If you're not getting attacked every day, then you're not in the will of God. And I mean, because of your faith, not being attacked because you've did something wrong, obviously, but because of your faith and why you're a Christian, there should be some very huge contrasts between light and darkness, between these people and those people. Those people live and act in this way, but we don't. They participate in certain things, but we participate not in those things, but in holy living. Jesus didn't just come to forgive you of the way you used to live and behave. He came to restore you and to give you a new character, a new life style. But we have to choose between these friends or godly friends, these kind of family or godly family, this way of thinking or a biblical way of thinking. I'm at a fight every day, not just between other people's opinions and other people's demons and the world, but myself. And I try to get right with God first within here. What can I not see? And I, wanna, I want you guys to sh see this for a second. Paul says this in one of the letters. 
He says, I put no confidence in myself. Think about that for a second. Do you put confidence in yourself? Do you trust in yourself? Do you believe in yourself? We hear that one a lot. Believe in yourself. Well, Paul is contradicting that very saying. I put no confidence. I don't believe in myself. John the Baptist says, I must decrease. Myself must decrease. I must become nothing. And God and Jesus must become more and more important. He already is everything good. What does that mean? I mean, as I'm facing this battle between porn or whatever I go through, whether I'm about to enter into a dispute with my wife or kids or, or people, do I put confidence in my own strength? Oh, I can knock this person out that threw something at me <laughs> or is being negative at me. I can out argue them or I can defeat my spouse in this strife, or this battle of right and wrong, whatever. Or my employees or employer, whoever you work with, I can, I can do them. I can outdo this person. And Jesus says, that's the character of Satan. That's the character of the world and demons to try to one up, to try to outdo each other. And Paul and Jesus speaks of it, laying down your life purposely losing, not for their sake, but for God's sake. For someone so loved, so Jesus so loved us that he laid down his life for us. And he asks us to do the same thing for each other, to think of each other more better than we ought think of ourselves. And Paul says, he says, I put no trust in myself but I love others more than I love myself. Do you love others, put others above you more than yourself? Put them first more than yourself. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Think about that order. Love your neighbor first more than you love yourself. The world loves themselves first. And then if there's anything left, they love their neighbor. They're only looking out for number one first. And then everyone else comes. But Jesus is reversing this world's way of thinking. Being on top. He says, if you want to be on top, you have to be on the bottom. So let me rein it in for a second. I'm battling my demons you're battling yours. Paul says, I put no confidence in my victory because of my own strength, wisdom, knowledge, power, whatever. In actuality, I humble myself to realize that I can't win this battle, no matter how smart or how powerful or how whatever I think I am. Do you think that you're strong or good enough? And this world is saying you have to go to the gym to be strong enough. You have to read all these books to be smart enough. You have to hang around these people to be worthy enough. But Jesus is simply saying, you have to become nothing and let me inhabit all of those areas of your life. And you will see then you will see the power of God when you become nothing, when you don't look to this or that or anything else, but you look to me to be the victory in all of these areas. Only then can you win your battle between sin, whether it's from yourself, whether it's from people, or ultimately from the one who defeated Satan, who defeated death itself, Jesus who is Lord. (sighs) 
And I started to realize that for myself. This battle that I'm facing cannot be won because of me, because of anything I can do. This battle can only be won through my humility to acknowledge the one who already beat the demons, the flesh, who overcame the flesh, who overcame people, who overcame Satan, death. And to acknowledge that and, and lift him up in that situation. And I know what you're thinking, probably worth thinking. You masturbated, didn't you, Jeremy? I did not. Not because of me, but because I acknowledge it, my Savior. I was like, Jesus, I need you. Even though I'm looking at it, as soon as you, you know your flesh, if you're a man, maybe even a woman, when you, as soon as you see something sexually explicit, you're just, you're already in it, man. You're already doing some action you shouldn't be doing. And that's usually me too. I humbled myself to my savior and I pleaded and I cried for him, even though I'm looking at it, but I never touched myself. And he, and he, and he was helping me fight it. He was with me in that moment, fighting the demons inside of me, fighting my own sinful nature. And I, all I have to say is, praise God. I put it away and I, I continued just a little bit further into my study and I went to sleep. They didn't even do anything at all. And, and, and I'm, I'm personally realizing that more of what salvation really means, justification by faith and faith alone, faith in the one who saved all humanity, faith in the one who saved us from each other and saved us from myself. And it's an ongoing battle. It's an ongoing battle. That's just battle one. I'm sure there's more to come, whether it's in pornography, whether it's in drugs, alcohol, whether it's in gossiping, whether it's in lying or cheating or stealing or worshiping idols, whatever your thing is, Jesus has already overcame it. It's only by pride that people don't come to Christ whether they're not saved or whether they think they're saved, but they're still living a sinful life. Meaning, yes, we all sin regularly, but whether, whether they're choosing to continue to not try to um, ask Jesus to pursue Jesus out of this lifestyle. Jesus didn't just come to save you or forgive you and pull you out of your sin. He came to keep you out of sin. But we have a choice to whether we acknowledge him, desire him more than we desire sin. And my last analogy is going to be this. I want you to look at leaning on your own understanding is the biggest stumbling block. There's a block here, if you can't see it, of the human Let me rephrase that. The biggest obstacle stumbling block hazard that's set before us in the Christian walk or not just in life is for people to trust in themselves.
I trust myself. <laughs> and Paul writes, and you stumble on yourself. The only person that can see was Jesus. Jesus said, what happens if two blind people walk down the road? Wouldn't they both eventually fall into a ditch? Because they're blind, they can't see. And that's what it means is to trust in yourself means to be blind, spiritually blind. And if everyone is spiritually blind, which the Bible refers to, giving each other advice is foolish, is dumb. I mean, you don't know what good is. You don't even have an inclination of what it could be. It's described as blind knowledge, foolish knowledge, who hang around the counsel of the wicked. You take advice from spiritually blind people. It's pretty dumb. And I fell into this, and I fall into this regularly. But as we grow in our relationship with Jesus, our Savior, our mediator, between God and people on earth. He's the only one who can see clearly. The Bible says that there is no darkness in God. And he's the only one that is described this way. It says, that don't put your trust in angels who God made. The Bible says that God fashioned the angels, and he even looks at the angels and still sees fault, fault representing darkness. So only, we should only be trusting in God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, the Father, three in one, one God. I'm not going to get into that Trinitarianism stuff, <laughs> but what I am going to say is, only God can see through all things because there is no darkness in him. And we have to put our trust in his advice. God may send people into your life to speak truth into your life. As he did the prophets in the Old Testament. I want you to think of God as being this music sheet who he wrote. He wrote music on a sheet. And we are the instruments who play his tune. You see, I'm a different person, so I'm a different instrument. I have a different personality. And God can use me to speak the same truth through my lips and through my life and my actions. And he can use you too. If you keep your eyes on the music sheet, playing his music, not your guitar. You don't have to be a violin because you're you. And I'm me. Don't try to be like me. I'm playing my the music sheet, the what what I see. I'm only focusing on, on the violin pieces because I'm me and I see the Bible in a certain way. And you see the Bible in a certain way. Because the Holy Spirit speaks through you when you read the Bible. He shows you what you need to learn at a certain time. And I'm gonna tell you one thing. He does it the same for me. Whenever I'm learning in the Bible, the Bible is timeless. It applies from the, the moment of creation to the moment that we were born to, the, to any, any moment in time. It doesn't return void because it's timeless. It applies for every season in every life, every moment of our life. And when we read the Bible, it's a timeless music sheet and and we see it for what we're what God is trying to teach us uh dang i try to stay short man 
Ah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to. Shoot. So. There's only one Bible. You have, there's only one music sheet, which represents the Bible. And that's what we preach from. And that's what the Spirit uses, uses us from. It, it, it speaks through us. And it, and it travels and hopefully speaks to other people. Don't read a different music sheet. Don't read a different scripture from another book that says, oh, this is the Bible too. It's not. It's not. Because people look at, you know, people... People are preaching different messages, different religions, different doctrines, you know, and some just white out there, you know, um, porn, started a website, doing the videos, preaching like, that's good. It's good. It's not good. It may feel good in the videos as they say, whatever, but it's not good. It's going to lead you into sin, which is going to destroy your soul one day. And it is destroying your soul every day that you go and willfully sin, even though you don't know the sin, even though you don't know right from wrong, what the Bible describes right from wrong, you're still sinning in God's eyes. In the Old Testament, they had to atone for their, the, the sins that they were ignorant of. Once they became aware of it, they had to make atonement for their sins, for even that. Sin, sins of ignorance. <laughs> so the Bible is our music sheet. And, and we preach from it, and hopefully it, it touches someone in a convicting way and reveals the truth about God's nature and character and His holiness. God is holy and perfect. I can't trust in myself. Neither can you, hopefully, you think so too. One of my favorite Bible passages was I heard this guy say this to me as life circumstance. You meet a bunch of people. I met this guy. I like this guy. I love this guy. Older gentleman. And he says, Proverbs 3, 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Dang. That's a good one, man. Every time. And if we're all blind, we cannot see. Blindness doesn't, isn't just for that passage where Jesus healed the blind man. He's talking about spiritual things. You can't see the spiritual realm because you're spiritually blind. And until you start reading the Bible, then the Bible will open up your spiritual eyes. If you desire it, your spiritual eyes, the spiritual heart, your spiritual ears to, to open up, the Bible will open that up for you and you'll start to see Demons doing what they're doing best, deceiving people, doing crazy things, hurting people, telling people to gossip about people, telling people to do evil things. And people are like sheep or like puppets. They're just doing it. You know why? Because they're enslaved to the sins. When they sin, the demon enters into them like a house. Like people enter into a house. And they start to make rearranging things inside the house. They say, that's good. That's good. Demons and darkness and Satan, they oppose God. And if you are breaking God's commands, you invite demons into your body to inhabit your body, to inhabit your character, to inhabit the things that you do. And how you even think about the world around you. We see a lot of evil, nasty, rude, crude behavior. Those are demons controlling people. Long story short. But Jesus says, if you humble yourself to me and allow me to show you the truth, then you will die in your sins because the demon's job here on earth 
is to destroy not only your life here, but to destroy your life into eternity. You think your life is bad right now. It's going to get worse if you don't acknowledge the sins that are in your life. But it's pride that people don't enter into church. It's pride that people don't read their Bible. It's pride that people don't believe in Jesus or pray. It's all pride. Your pride is holding you back from the truth of the real, true, living, holy God Almighty. The Bible describes God saying, I keep the humble close to me, but the proud are far away from me. Let's open up in prayer. Father, I thank you for today. Beautiful Tuesday. This video will air, hopefully Wednesday, if your will be done. Hopefully what I pray is in your will be done. Hopefully what I desire is in your will. I'm sorry that I have not trusted in you. I pray if there's any darkness in me, you would reveal it. You would bring me into fellowship with you, into communion with me, you. You would draw me as far as I have been in my sin close to you to accept correction because I'm living in sin. We're always living in sin. There's always something to learn. There's always something to be delivered from. You'll never fully be delivered from sin till the day you die. But you can be rescued little by little, if you're willing, and have a more fruitful, peaceful, loving, amazing life. If you're willing to acknowledge that you can't save yourself. No one or nothing can save you, only Jesus. It's pride. I did my research, man. I was like, why don't people want to know Jesus? And I kept coming up with the same answer. Pride. That's why Satan fell. That's why we fall. That's why we make mistakes. We make mistakes. Usually, most of our mistakes is because of pride. Wow. I'm right. I know what I'm doing. I got this. I look at the Bible, I'm reading through Joshua. Every time something bad happened, they didn't go to God. They, they try to do it themselves. It always failed. <laughs> Every time someone went to God and acknowledged him, whether it was really small, it eventually became really big. How do you keep yourself from stumbling on the stumbling block. You humble yourself and you ask God for his advice, for his truth and for his love and mercy. And he will show you and he will bring people into your life to show you where your fault is. If you're willing to accept it. And then you can see, and then you can move around what you've been stumbling over your whole life. That's the message for today. God bless.